The Halloween event starts today, and with it we got some details on a new patch that's coming out with some stability issues, but also Gearbox basically talking about the future, what they intend to add, some really cool stuff, Mayhem 4, new legendaries, more bank space, as well as going into a bit of detail on each of them. Sounded like they're learning a lesson and they're starting to understand how to update the game. Really starting to flex their plan for the future, even talking about the Malawan takedown just a little bit. I want to go through the patch notes and then generally give my impressions on some of the stuff here, just so you have the news so you can quit if you don't want to hear what I have to say. The main thing that's in here that's going to be in this patch and in future patches is performance and stability fixes. As you can see on screen, there are a couple that are in game, but performance is still an area that Gearbox wants to iterate on. Game performance and stability continue to be our top priority. The first fruits of that labour will be released in our upcoming November patch with various improvements game-wide. We've also been hard at work improving the game's stability and more improvements in the regard are expected to be included in that November patch. Performance and stability will continue to be an ongoing effort with more fixes rolled out with each upcoming patch. There's basically three sentences that repeat each other in this paragraph but it's good to know that it's their priority at least. The bank. Expanded the bank has been the most consistently requested feature by the community. We've heard you loud and clear and the groundwork for Expanded the Bank has already started. The first of several planned expansions will coincide with the release of Takedown at Maliwan's Black Site. Expect a significant bank expansion that will more than double the existing space. Additional expansions to the bank will continue to be rolled out over future releases. All sounds good, like I said, give my impressions in a second. Dedicated loot pools for bosses. Several of you have stated a desire to find gear more easily in the game. To do that, we are updating the loot pools, the data that determines which in-game items drop from specific enemies or bosses, to ensure that more specific gear drops drops from said bosses. It means you'll be able to go for a specific boss to get a specific piece of gear that you're looking for. We're working out which bosses will get what and we expect this to be ready as part of the November patch as well. This November patch sounds pretty exciting, no doubt this is going to be with the Malawan takedown patch in general but whether it's early November or late November, more likely later, that remains to be seen. Character buffs. In the late stages of the game when Mayhem mode is active we found the player companions Iron Bear, Pets and Digiclone are reportedly not performing as well as we expected. To address this we're looking at how to adjust damage according to the relevant skills and gear. The goal here is to make sure we have a as many viable character builds as possible. Now we get into the interesting stuff. Additional Mayhem levels and Mayhem 2.0. Mayhem mode has been a fantastic addition to the Borderlands world. After receiving some great community feedback, we've been hard at work on a significant revamp that will introduce a host of improvements over several upcoming updates. The first update will be the release as part of the takedown of Malawan Black Site patch and includes the first new Mayhem mode level, Mayhem 4. Expect a significant challenge with tougher enemies that reward players with highly synergized character builds, a new batch of legendary gear, this is important, that will only drop in Mayhem 4 to reward those players who are truly up for the challenge. Longer term we have plans to overhaul Mayhem mode with more UI support, new Mayhem modifiers that change gameplay more dramatically, playlists, new rewards and additional levels of Mayhem to work through. We're excited about Mayhem 2.0 we'll talk about it more when we get a bit closer to its release. Skippable cutscenes. We're currently investigating the best way to approach letting players skip cutscenes. This is much easier said than done. Under the hood the game may activate critical events based on cinematics. In order to make sure mission progression isn't negatively impacted, we need to inspect each cinematic and make sure those events still work correctly. We have a few ideas on how to tackle this and expect to have a solution soon. Target dummy. Need an easier way to test your gear? I told you there was a lot. We're going to add a target dummy into the shooting range on Sanctuary. We feel this is the best location since your bank is also on the ship. This way you can manage and test your builds on Sanctuary without having to travel anywhere else. You can expect to see this sometime in December. And to a lesser extent, vending machines. Mac has heard the outcry for more vending machines, so we're airdropping in across multiple maps. Expect new ammo and health vending machines outside a few boss areas in a few of some of the bigger environments. So for Athena, no doubt before Captain Trant, Atlas HQ before Katagawa, Skyroll 27 before Katagawa Ball, Electra City before Killer Vault, Jacob's Estate before Billy the Anointed, Voracious Canopy, no doubt before Genevieve, Tanzadir Ruins, and also a couple of others in various areas. Most importantly, the future. The list above is a high level look at what some of the teams are working on. Stay tuned as we continue to add more information and additions to this list. We here at Gearbox are excited about where Borderlands 3 is heading and we look forward to showing you all the content that's still to come. In this patch, there's a lot of stability and general fixes, which I'll go over in a second. But now I wanted to talk about all of the areas that we've just gone over on what is a impactful change, what isn't. Performance and stability is an ongoing thing. Like 
like Gearbox have said in the past, they can't just do it as a micro patch. They need to invest a lot into this. So they're doing this as fast as they can. They've told us on three separate occasions that game performance and stability is a top priority. So I believe them when I say it. But a lot of this content that I feel with bank space, dedicated loot pools, all that jazz, I will be happier when I see it as opposed to hearing about it. Don't get me wrong. Gearbox have done awesome work at listening to the community and working out the key areas on what to improve on. However, with a lot of stuff like Anthem in the past and a lot of general developers going, yeah, we hear you, loud and clear, and they don't do anything, it's kind of made me very skeptical when I see developers go, yes, we're going to fix X, will they though? It's kind of like the Fall Ragnarok meme. First of all, the bank, great news that they're looking to improve it and will continue to increase the bank space in the future. I think this is a really good addition. It's necessary. I've got too many characters that are just muled up with gear that I'm not using. This should have been a day one thing, but I understand why Gearbox are taking their time with implementing this, considering that they had a bug that cleared what was in your bank altogether. So they've been very slow and careful with that, and I understand why. It's nice to see it's on the way. Dedicated loot pools for bosses. This is pretty big, if I'm honest. There's so many legendaries in the game, over 200. And having that ability of agency of, I want the Hellwalker gun. I know that if I want that, I either need to kill stuff in the Voracious Canopy, or I could go fight this boss on Promethea. You know what I mean? Having that ability to specifically hunt down bits of gear, most importantly, anointed bits of those gear, is super cool for future stuff that's coming out. Better, stronger mayhem modifiers, new bosses, new DLC making sure that you can get the best gear that you possibly can for characters this helps a long way and it gives you just an element of something to focus on i haven't really been playing borderlands all that much recently because i have everything that i want and anything else that i want it's farm grave ward that's the only thing that i can realistically do i hope that it drops randomly in the world and that's not really that fun to do if i'm being honest so that's kind of the only issue that i suppose people may be running into at the moment this very much nails that but i think that the mayhem modifier stuff is the bigger thing the fact that we're getting not only mayhem 4 which is a bit tougher will have less of the bullshit modifiers of reflected damage or increase in health with the addition of new modifiers are a bit more fun and will make it more viable to run different things that all sounds good but the fact that you will be able to get new legendaries from mayhem 4 gives you another thing to chase if you haven't got the gear to survive on mayhem 4 you have to farm the lower mayhems to get it and then you can start getting the new legendaries which with any luck are worth getting and those kind of bits of content and stuff to chase not only resonate with me but i know that they resonate with a lot of you guys too just based off the videos that i've done in the past of here are all of the 12 unique legendaries that drop from bosses i had a lot of fun making that because i was genuinely interested to see what they dropped but also it got half a million views you know you guys wanted to know that kind of information as well and more of that please but there isn't an awful lot of stuff to really cover i don't want to do weapon reviews because like for example the hellwalker is really fun the laser exploder my favorite gun in the game how do you get it ryan well you just gotta get lucky that sucks so having specific weapons behind mayhem 4 means that we can go into it and go here are the 10 legendaries that you get from doing mayhem 4 here's how you get them because you can farm specific bosses with dedicated loot pools which means that you can go oh ryan said that this new gun is really good you need to farm katagawa on mayhem 4 to get it i'm gonna go do that and get it all of that is a super cool feature and i'm glad that borderlands are taking it in that direction because borderlands end game just feels like it's out to sea and you have no control over what direction you're going you kind of get everything that you want and then you're just sat there waiting for this new patch granted the halloween event might be cool to test out some of the kit and builds that you've been running other than that there's not really been too much to do over the past couple of weeks since launch Skippable cinematics, they basically said that they're working on it, not too much new there. It is nice to understand though why it's taken a while and why it isn't as simple as just, just remove them forehead. Target dummy's nice, I can't believe we have to wait until December to get it though. Vending machines and stuff is fine, character buffs, we know that they're coming. There is some pretty significant stuff in there, and I really like what Gearbox have done here. The patch itself has general stuff in it, just to sort of read out a couple, fix the bug resulting in crashing when loading into maps, fixing audio crashes, fixing crashes when you sort the mission log by region, consoles now have mayhem mode for true vault hunter mode, your photo mode, the Twitch extension, We'll get the new customization and trinkets, I think, for the event. The boss who adjusted the volume for the 2K and Gearbox logo intro. Oh, rest in peace, really loud music when you start up the game. But other than that, it's just general stuff, nothing to really poke at too much. But I really like that Gearbox are showing the fact that they're listening 
I think I need to see less of them listening now, more of them doing, but I know that that takes a while and that's just me being very much first world problems. I really like Borderlands, but maybe because I've been so burnt out making lots of content on it, playing hundreds of hours over that short time span before launch, to now where there isn't really too much that I haven't done at this point. I've been sort of waiting and sort of taking a bit of a break if I'm being honest, but the Halloween event should be good. I'll be going over some content over that, the new legendary, whether it's worth getting, showing off the new stuff there if you haven't had the chance to play it and generally what you should be doing in order to complete as much as possible. After that though, again, we're in a waiting period for this Maliwan takedown, which does sound exciting, and with it should bring a pretty big patch with all of the stuff that we just mentioned. Let me know what you guys think in the comments though, this is just a general news video giving my impressions too. Thanks for watching and all of the support over the past couple of months, you guys are absolutely greatest. Thanks for watching, take care, see you soon.